Hello, and welcome to Ponery's Penny Arcade, something that you probably haven't seen on my channel since January, maybe February. Anyway, you catch me in slightly unfamiliar territory because I haven't done one of these in four months, maybe longer. Anyway, this is State of Decay 2, and... What I thought I would do, because this game had been out for a few years, is treat this like the long, dark sandbox survival. So what I'm doing is the, uh, what do they call it? I forgot. <laughs> it's There's three modes. This is the first mode where it's basically like a sandbox survival. And you get to actually build up characters and and communities along the way. I'm going to play this single player only. What I thought I would do is I'm going to play through the tutorial just to give you an idea how the game works, assuming that you haven't seen or played this before. And then we're going to follow up by starting up our first sandbox survival scenario and play it through to completion just to give you a feel for how the game works. And then what we'll do after that is we'll follow it up with ramping up the difficulty. So the goal is to try to make it as impossible to survive as possible or work our way up to it because this game can play like the long dark where you can change the difficulty like interloper, uh, voyager, uh, pilgrim, and uh, interloper. So. What I'll do is I'm going to start on normal just because I'm this beacon of hope community that I have here. Uh, it's what I was playing for the longest time just to get used to the game. If you've never seen this game before, I swear that the developers for the original H1Z1 were probably the guys who helped develop this or moved over to develop this because once they split off and sort of forgot their way and they went with that arena team deathmatch stuff called King of the Kill, they allowed their uh, just survive to sort of just languish and die, which really sucked because the game was quite good. Now, the things that I can tell you about this is the weapon selections are far better. They kind of remind me a little bit of um, Escape from Tarkov with the level of detail you can get. And there's more vehicles, way more vehicles than H1Z1. Plus the fact that you can upgrade them and turn them into other things, more useful things. Uh, the base building structure, it's sort of semi-rigid, but you can at least choose the pre-selected options to tailor that base with certain things or not to have certain things. So anyway, I'm not going to play this community. I'm going to start a new one just for this, and I'll we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and replay the tutorial for that community. But see, there's there's easy mode, and then it goes all the way up to like lethal. So this is the standard mode here. We're going to do it on this one first. And then I think if I ramp it up later, we'll upgrade it to dread. So the hordes are bigger, the zombies are harder to kill, things like that, less resources. Then we'll get into nightmare. As you can see, this is getting darker and darker and bleaker. Uh, the human enemies are more, you know, difficult to kill. Uh, the hordes will have more freaks in it, which are like your screamers. Uh, they have this one called the Juggernaut, which is like this big, giant, fat dude that's really hard to kill. And then they have the thing called a Bloater, where it's a... Well, it's a Bloater. He's, he's bloated, and then if you shoot him, he explodes into this noxious gas that you have to wait to dissipate. Stuff like that. And then Lethal... I've never even tried this, but apparently it's damn near impossible. So hopefully I'll be able to get us through to Lethal, just because I'm curious how well I can do it. I got pretty good at this game. And I've discovered that I'm, I prefer to be the Daryl Dixon type in terms of using a crossbow because they're quiet and there's a really wicked auto crossbow. So you can get eventually. Anyway, we're going to go ahead with standard just for now. And I guess I forgot to mention this will be the first 30, but we're definitely going to play an hour. So... I already have these amenities that help me play along, and I think, I don't think it would be fair 
to have these given to me from a start, right? That wouldn't be cool. But I kind of want at least one. I can select two. So like amenities like this will give me water and power when I create a base, which is nice because then I get to use, I get to save two outpost spaces. Uh, outposts basically give you a daily allowance of like food, ammunition, um, building materials, and then there's water plants, power plants. Uh, if you get like a military checkpoint, you can pick up on artillery strikes, things of that nature. So just for creature comforts, like I, I almost never pick the warlord one because you can find most of the weapons and stuff anyway. I suspect when we get to like lethal or whatever, I might lean on this one, but I don't really need it for what we're about to do. Sheriff's kind of cool because you get like a daily drop off of supplies every day, but I've, I've discovered that I don't really use what they bring me anyway. So I probably won't use that one. Uh, Trader though is nice because you get 4,000 influence right from the get-go. So you don't have to do as many side quests and missions to build up what they call influence. Because you get to buy things through influence. It's kind of like the currency in the game. So I think what I'll do is just get Builder. I won't use two, I'll just use the one. Because I'd like to have water and power as a bare minimum. But just keep in mind that you don't get that without finishing certain missions. Uh, and certain endings. So anyway, we're going to start off, you get to choose two of your characters to start with. And this is like the Surly siblings here. They sort of give you a background of what their, uh, what their, well, their, what their background story is. And then you get to, you know, see their statistics here. So this guy's already got a fifth skill. Um, in the beginning, it's kind of nice to have people with a fifth skill. Otherwise, you can start with just the four, and then you can jack of all trades them and give them a fifth school, a skill through a book. So what I usually do is I lean towards people that already have a fifth skill, at least one of them, and then that way I have one advantage working into building the base or maintaining it. And then as the game progresses, what ends up happening is, is you finish a scenario, and once the scenario is over, you get to keep your legacy uh, community members. So they stay in a pool, and then you can draw from them to use them towards the next community when you start the next playthrough. So this game has a lot of uh, replay value, where it's like you finish the scenario, and then you're like, okay, well, let's do another one, because there's several maps. And then they'll let you take like three people from your last community, should you choose to do that. And then it sort of starts you off with a slight advantage of having somebody with good skills to sort of make the beginning, uh, it's not really a learning curve, but the beginning uh, stages a little more expedient to get through so you can kind of just get to the getting sort of a thing. Anyway, this guy's got good mechanics, which is actually kind of useful. Each skill has a secondary skill. So once you master this, then you get to pick an expertise and that usually branches off to one or two other skills. So you want to kind of pick and choose these to a point where there's not too much redundancy amongst your community. That way you have like a diversity of characters uh, in your community. So that way you can say, okay, well this guy, I can't, you know, he does like my automotive things and this guy's my builder, this one's my farmer, stuff like that. But one thing that's very important is, is this game is permadeath. So if you lose a community member, they're gone forever. So you want to be very, you want to err on the side of caution, especially when you have to deal with hordes, because if you have one doctor and your doctor dies, you're kind of screwed. You have to go out and find another one, or recruit one, or find somebody with four skills and give them the fifth skill of medicine. So it, it's kind of... they've thought this out. Anyway, I got those two. I got the old buddies. This is the one I usually go with, because I know that Eddie eventually develops stealth, which is something I heavily lean on. It allows him to run in a crouch silent. So this is the guys I usually start with. I think they're like college friends or something. And then I think the last one's the, yeah, the, the perpetual breakup. So these two are, this is your woke option, essentially. But, I mean, girl power in games is fine. Girl power in movies is fine. But they seem to be doing a certain thing without being, without trying to be political or apolitical or whatever. But it's like, you can see right through it. Either way, this one's kind of a cool setup because she has chemistry already, which is nice. Because this works towards, like, munitions development, I think. And that's pretty useful, too. But I'm going to just stick to my sort of comfort zone. So this is the odd couple here. And I think 
Yeah, these two these two are complete strangers that sort of got smashed together. And then gardening is really useful for her. That's kind of nice. But I'm going to stick with my old familiar. I'm going to stick with the old buddies one because their dialogues between the two is pretty funny too. And it kind of sucks when one dies, if one dies, because what the dialogues change if you lose members. It's pretty sad. I might have the music up a little too high. I'm going to adjust that. Keep moving. Keep moving. Hurry up, boy. What is that shit, man? It's like his whole body is an open wound. Dude, we gotta keep moving. That gate won't hold him long. Actually, in the, in the tutorial, the gate holds him all day long. But usually, yeah, if they start banging on the door, here. they will break through. Trust me, these army camps have food so, and real beds. The tutorials will tell you if you hold the button down, you know, temporary runs. The blue bar on the left is obviously for. Uh, The blue bars are stamina. Shit, biters and the got right through their security. Bar is obviously What's security? Your There's nobody here. Hit points. It's a refugee Sorry. camp with no refugees. Let me fix the volume. It's a bit it's a bit loud still. I turn this down a bit more. Turn that down a bit more. I'm doing this through a headset, so I have to sort of gauge the, the volume. Looks like they left all their stuff, too. Okay, so I got a bat that's about to break. I don't have to worry about that gate over there. We're going to walk around in a crouch just because I don't like attracting noise. And one thing you'll notice is if you see that little ring that keeps like acting like a radar at the bottom of the screen, that's sort of like a, a sound radar. So it's like, okay, there's a sound coming from behind me, which is obviously those guys banging on the gate. If I stand up and walk, you'll see that I produce a small sound, too. But if I squat... No sound at all. And right now what we're in is a refugee camp for the tutorial. So, I mean, they, they vanilla this enough for you just to kind of learn. And obviously everything has a key binding. I prefer to play this game mouse and keyboard because there's so many different things you can do. Yes, finally. All right, so we got a bit of health. Okay, so if you didn't know, this is your inventory here. Uh, because I have this backpack, the six the six slot backpack, I have this option down here. Uh, I think the biggest one you can get is eight, only eight. And they, there's different versions that weigh a different amount too. Because if you notice up here, the traveling weight changes with how much stuff you carry. So, for instance, the eight pound or the eight slot backpack weighs more, so it's going to make this heavier. And if I had the lighter version of the 8, it'll make this a little bit lower. But, you know, obviously the higher this goes, traveling medium, traveling heavy, traveling extreme or whatever, that will affect your fatigue as you run around on the map because you do have to sleep. But it's a passive sleep, so you just switch characters or whatever and then they'll take a break. But that's part of the, the sandbox part, not this. So anyway, we're just going to start creeping around here and I'm sure the game is going to give me a little about the you know, haves tips and, the and whatnot. Have that's the deads and the not deads. Fuck. So you start off with everyone Got always it. has a melee weapon, like a, a combat close combat or whatever. Usually it's like a knife or a screwdriver or something. And you will rely heavy on that if you play stealthy, like I prefer to do. So there's an aggro range. I think it's a little tighter than it ought to be like that thing should be able to see me from here but it doesn't so we just got to take it for what it is you can hold the left shift to do a faster search but then you run the risk of making a noise and if you do Hell that yeah. then everything within an earshot will basically turn and attack you so right now we're just kind of stealthing along i can't go after that chubby bastard over there because this guy will see me Dude, you're gonna die if you can't scare up a stronger weapon. 
Yeah, I know. The dialogue does try to be helpful. Now I'm going to sneak up behind this guy. And I'll do the close combat. There's a button. I think it's just E. And then you just stab him inside the head. Bring him down. That's all automated. There's several different animations for it. But you do want to get up on these guys quick. If you commit to doing this kind of attack, don't stop. Because sometimes they just turn around. And then your, your cover's blown. And you don't want that. They can send me to look for all the stuff. So if you allow it to do it slowly, then you're fine. It just takes it just takes time. And then you can roll the mouse wheel to change the different things from your backpack, like the consumables, and then just hit the Q button to use it. So I just used a I think it was a bandage. So it's a heal over time, which is why it slowly crept up. There's certain items you can take that instantly just max out whatever, you know, however the amount that they uh, provide you with. So there's several different, like, med kits you can use. Now that was damn lucky. This is for stamina. Now another thing you can do is if you don't want to use this guy, you can talk to your... your uh, companion and then you can but right now we're just doing a talk here so we'll just go ahead and do this you know it i don't know if they're going to give me the option to switch characters okay yeah you know it. so later on in the sandbox you can talk to your companion and then you can just say you take over and then you switch characters and then your other guy becomes the dude in tow oh boy see she changed direction here they come. oh damn it <laughs> oh there goes my weapon That's made to happen, though. You start off with a crippled weapon. It forces you to go find another one, essentially. The the tutorial does, rather. So, it's still technically in my inventory, but because it's broken, I can't use it. I don't think I can jump over this. No. And obviously Dude, this part's very linear. A real bad vibe You're not supposed place. to be able to hop over certain things. They're, they're like the, the hard border. Besides, there are too many zombies behind us to turn around first. now. Dude, you seriously need a better weapon. They need to stop talking while I'm sneaking up on them. There you go. I rely heavily on stealth for that. Like it once you get a guy that's got stealth maxed out, life becomes a little easier when you're on like supply runs and whatnot. Finally. There we go. New weapon. So what I'll probably do is I'll just equip this right out of the box. That'll work. There you go. And that is a rather large tire iron. That's a blunt weapon, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So there's different types of weapons. Blunt, edged, uh, heavy, two-handed, things like that. This I really don't need anymore, so I'll probably just drop it. Yeah, we'll just drop it. I don't need this. Just takes up space anyway. So I'm still probably traveling light. Oh, and if you're wondering what that active bounty thing up there is, um, it's part of the sandbox survival. I didn't think that the, the missions would carry over to another community, but apparently it does. Those are like little challenges, and then you find this guy who offers the bounties, and each one gives you a certain reward, like uh, like unique weapons or... Uh, wow. One of his missions After actually gives you time, a, a unique car. To find their loved ones. There's a thought. Waiting to make sure your friends are dead? I didn't leave you, man. We've been over this. You only came back because you forgot your stash of food. Oh, oh the food I selfishly shared with you? Right. I don't know why I take those, but... Certain items like that you pick up and take, you can put them in your storage, and then they'll still trigger the mission whether it's in your possession or not, which is kind of nice. Just wastes a spot otherwise. Yes, finally. A lot of bandages. Alright, so we're outnumbered. There's three of them. 
I'm just right clicking so I can get a better view. So a lot of times what you'll have to do is just kind of sit back and watch their movement patterns. That way you can take them on one at a time, essentially. If I went after her right now, that guy would come at me. I mean, obviously, that would put me in his line of sight. I'll just wait for him to turn. Eventually? Come on, bro. Alright, fine. We'll go around the long way. See, he should be able to see me, and yet he doesn't. There he goes. For some reason, they don't they don't react to your companion either. Kind of weak. That guy might see it. I figured. Fighters are getting close. Oh, we're just gonna have to fight this one out. When they're on the ground like this, you just press E, and that'll give you a finishing move too. So there's always that. I didn't really want to do it that way, but whatever. We gotta get you through this. We're already 21 minutes in. I will commit an hour to the beginning. We'll probably do each episode in an hour. Um, see, I can't talk to him about his health, so he's probably immune for at least this uh, tutorial. Alright. If I press C, he'll dodge. But he also has this little juke. Alright, so now we're in here. Oh, and you are equipped with a flashlight, so if you notice it's kind of darker, if you press F, you're automatically... I think it's attached to your lapel or something. Alright, so now we're in here. What is this place? Stand and uh, fight. Central booking? See, the tutorial was telling me to use it anyway, but I already did it. Locked. Looks just like that thing we saw outside the gate. Fuck! Fucking bite or bit me! Fuck! So much for food and beds. Okay. If I remember right, that one... There's two different types of zombies. So you've got the standard ones that have like a yellowish-orange glowing eye. Then you've got plague zombies, which have bright red eyes. The plague zombies, if they bite or scratch you, you develop blood plague. And if you let it go too long, you die and then turn into one of them. So you have to create what's called the uh, blood plague cure. Which we'll get into that later. Yeah, that's a blood plague. The other thing is like totally red skin. Makes them pretty easy to identify. <laughs> the game does make, make the learning curve a little bit flat just by helping you out in that kind of way. Make sure to check every room. Sometimes there's goodies. I am erring on the side of caution. I'm pretty sure I could just walk right through this whole area, but just trying to be careful. That's you know, monkey see, monkey do. If you want to learn how to play this properly, learn Finally. how to be stealthy. These are just no, the rules. Check on out the these rules. Camp. You would have hated it here. Shit, this bite is really itching. You act like you never got bit before. So yeah, he that he wasn't in, he's infected. Whoa, what the hell happened here? Oh fuck me. Now he can't get up, so he's a pretty easy kill. Just walk up and do the fish and you kill. They have three of them, so you get three times to kind of get used to this concept. If you commit to that automated move oh, like that, shoes. they can't hurt you. Like, it'll die, it'll kill them. Something's wrong. I feel like I'm burning hot. All right, let's see if we can find you some medicine. He's getting bad. Nothing there. Remember to search everything. Just do it quickly. Oh, hell yeah. 
A machete! I'll That's take it. So I still have the tire iron, but I, I prefer the machete because it has dismemberment capabilities. I think it's stronger than the tire iron too in terms of lethality. Got a first aid kit here. Lots of bandages. This is useful. We'll go ahead Won't and do use anything for that one. fever. The cupboard's bare, man. All right. That is a shitload of zeds. Just All right. So quiet. now we're just we'll going to do very it. quiet movement here. See, I've been doing this stealth execution thing already throughout the whole playthrough. It's only because I'm used to it. I gotta catch this before it turns around. Those guys can can't technically see me because I'm far enough far enough away. Oh boy, that's a screamer. So this is the first problem you run into is those. I'm gonna have to kill it the old-fashioned way. That thing has like a 270 degree view. See how he turns his head constantly? He can't attack. The only thing he can do is scream and that causes all the other zombies to come. So the easiest way to kill him is just to bum rush him or shoot him in the head from a distance. In this case, see there's nothing I can do. Hey, up here, get to the ladder. Well, Go why dude, couldn't you move. do that beforehand? So he's got their attention over there. And then what I'm going to do... Oh, crap. I didn't think they were coming. Let's just go up the ladder. I'm not going to fight them. What are you doing here? This camp has been decommissioned. Did you decommission the food too? We haven't eaten in days. Strategic redeployment of resources. The brass pulled the whole op. The army's gone, my friend. He's one of my Except favorite characters. I lost him in my main playthrough. Good here. Totally clumsy Seriously, mistake. Dude, it's like my fucking blood is on fire. Uh oh. I've heard that symptom before. My friend got bit by a real nasty zombie with blood all over it. Yeah, normal meds won't help. Better head to the SMB. And pray the doc still has what you need. Tell her I sent you. Okay. Oh, get down. Gonna stick to the stealth platform. Just to climb over. Not here. Those guys can't do anything because of the gate, so they're just sort of static display. You definitely don't want to deal with that many. Not this early on. Alright, so here's the S and B. Swine and bovine. <laughs> and up, aren't you? Why are you still here? The last trucks left days ago. Are you the doctor? He never gives up, does he? Okay, what do you need? My friend got bit. He says his blood is on fire. I see. You better come with me. That thing in the cage looks like the one that bit me. You're looking at blood plague. Once you catch it, you just burn up from the inside. Hold up. I'm gonna turn into one of those things? You would, if I weren't here. You, time to help your friend. In my other playthrough, the doctor was actually an Asian girl. So I kind of like the whole random... Take your flashlight and look for a sample case in there. Bring me whatever you find. All right. Before I lost my team, we were learning all we could about blood plague. We found a cure that works if you use it soon after infection. The army took our lab when they left, but they didn't get everything. Over time! Blood plague samples. Bring it back to her. Did you find it? Yep. No cure? That's bad. I'll need an infirmary to culture a new dose.
Okay. Hey, Doc. The camp is compromised. Thanks to all the noise, the Zeds are swarming the east perimeter. That day we talked about, it's here. It's time to go. You know I can't leave Charlie. If you stay, I gotta stay. Then we all die. Charlie's gone. But this guy still needs your help. Charlie's the guy in the cage. Okay, but I need to say goodbye, you know? Make it quick. We don't have much time. Hey, I, I need your help with something. That thing in the cage, it was a person once. Charlie and I, we were all we had left. There's only one option now, but I don't have the strength. Okay. She's going to leave the room. I have to execute Charlie. So she gave me this PPK in 22. Weak sauce. Alright. So. To use this. Just right click to aim. Left click to shoot. I'm sorry. I hope you're in a better place now. So I can leave that weapon equipped because basically what happens is, is I have to right click before I'm allowed to shoot. You can't just shoot normally. If you just click the fire button now, you just swing your melee <clears throat> weapon. So it's okay. Wow, that man died on his feet. What a boss. Dude, right. I'm sorry. I know I'm a fuck up. But please, don't let me go out like that. No way. Someone's got to come up with all our great plans. Alright, let's go talk to these guys. Thank you. I hope I never have to repay the favor. It's time to move. You drive, I'll ride shotgun. Fine. A buddy of mine told me a safe place we can hit. And off we go. How the hell do we do this without the army around? It's you know, I never checked this. Oh, you don't have access to the map. Find somewhere okay. safe. We survive. And that's the intro. Isn't that cool? So yeah, for the first time you actually do want to play the tutorial because you end up with four pretty decent starting characters that way. Sounds like we're empty again. We'd better be close. This is the place. Pull up here. It's not much, but it has four walls. So I've noticed that it's not ideal, every first but map is always this one. Sounds For good. me. Every hey, time buddy. I even tell it to do hey, random, it, it picks this one. I'm not gonna lie, bro. I feel pretty bad. Alright, our vehicle took some beating, as you can soon see. If we're gonna have any chance against this plague, you need to get some medical attention. You got it, Doc. Let me just go find the infirmary. Okay, it's right here. Blood plague victims. Keep blood plague victims in your infirmary to halt the progression of the disease. If you can bring in the cure, you can save their lives. If you can't, sometimes you have to kill them. Or exile them. Pretty mean. So, let me see if his inventory has anything useful. No, see, he's got the standard loadout with the screwdriver. Now, I've got uh, radio commands, but because I have all these unlocks in the game, you're going to see a bunch of stuff that you probably won't start with. Also, if you look up above the map there, it says that I have blood plague. The infection part is already... We're past that. We're already at the point where it's going to kill us. So in the beginning, you have, like, the drop with the skull on the far right. And you can, you can walk around infected for, like, two or three hours, if I'm not mistaken. But every time he gets scratched by another blood zombie, that gauge takes big chunks and goes towards, you know, this level. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get into here, use the infirmary. And I think I have to create the blood plague cure, which I can't because I don't have enough samples, as you can see. So the only thing I can do right now is put him in here for treatment. Checks him in, and I think what that does is it... It doesn't stop it, but it slows it down. 
and if you upgrade your infirmary, uh, it can cure the infection part, not the plague part that we've got already. So, now we have to pick a different person, so I'm going to go ahead and pick Eddie. Holy shit! You want to find me a sick bed? Hey, Doc. He's going to be okay, right? You can fix this. This isn't as good as having the actual cure, but I should be able to keep his blood plague from getting worse for a while. Okay. That so. is, if we can keep our supply of meds from running out. Right. Fuck. Come on, Doc. I thought you had the cure for this. Yes, we can manufacture the cure from plague samples. If you're wondering why the shadows the are jerky lab, like that, it's just the way the king more. does it. That's how quick the time is. Hey, a bunch of those plague zeds on our way into town. For some reason, That's I've got good place to look. ten thousand prestige already. What the heck? Must be from my other playthrough. I didn't think I'd get so many carryovers on a new game, but it is what it is. So anyway. I have to travel to a location where they saw plague zombies because I need to kill a few more to get more of the blood sample or the plague samples so she can culture a cure. Uh, at the top left, that's the stuff on your base. So the, uh, we have food, medical from left to right, top to bottom. Food, medical supplies, ammunition, uh, building supplies, and fuel. And then the next column or the next row is a uh, number of colonists number of parts, usable parts for repairs and maintenance, that is. Um, I forgot what the 50 is. I think that's influence. And then the other thing is prestige, which yours will be zero, and I really don't know why mine's at 99.99 right now. But anyway, um, here's our inventory here. And then what I want to do is go to your supply locker and just drop off stuff you're not going to need to take with you. I don't need any of this. Technically, I don't need any of this because I always play ultra careful anyway. So we got toolboxes, a couple of rounds of ammo. This is the all items view, but you can narrow it down. So just like weapons and ammo, blunt weapons, uh, consumables like health, uh, repair kits, you know, stuff like this. This is crafting items. And then this is miscellaneous, which is going to be like... I think your backpacks go in that one, too. So anyway, let's get moving on, because I've got to get that stuff before our companion gets worse. Actually, he can't get worse. The next thing will kill him. And then here, this is where you can actually manually choose to have someone you know, switch characters. And then each major part of your base has a mod, but we don't have any yet. There's little creature comforts and things that add extra bonuses. So the first thing I need to do is I need to go to that location on the map, which is... Let me zoom out here. The game starts you off in Providence Ridge. Um, after the tutorial. And this is actually a really good map. Like, I didn't... I played through it the first time and I was like, meh. Couldn't wait to start another one. But then I manually came back to this one for another playthrough and I really enjoyed it because this whole area here is like a giant mountain range. And then, like, a valley down here. So there's, like, a bunch of cool different places Just that you can go to. Hope it helps. And then here, this is what's called, a like, a landmark outpost. So if you free up one of these and you use it as one of your um, outpost sections here, you'll gain the bonuses of that outpost. So, like, in this one here, it gives us an... Ad well... It's beds, morale, and defense, but what the, the legacy outpost will also do is give us two extra community slots. So usually you can only carry, I think, nine people, but sometimes you can overload it to like 11 or 12, I think. You'll see. And then these, these indicators here are potential home sites. So like, usually what I do on this map is I'll take that one, the truck stop, because it comes with an... Uh, like, certain, certain uh, bases have a certain perk already built into it, and this one has uh, a garage already built into it, which is nice. Because then you don't have to worry about upgrading a guy with mechanics to do car stuffs. I've never used this one, which is a fenced warehouse. But they come in different sizes, so this is considered a medium-sized base. This one's considered, I think, a medium-sized base. This one down here is a fire station. This one's considered a large-sized base. Which, also, you can tell because of the number of opened uh, large and small and medium, or large and small slots, indoors and outdoors. 
Plus the claiming costs are much higher. And I think down here is like a wood shop. Yeah, lumber mill. So you can choose, you know, to move your base because you're going to need more space for uh, building materials and like the type of things that you're going to actually put on your base and uh, for the number of people in your community because there's only so much space allowed here. Otherwise, you're going to run out of space. And then for some, if for some reason you don't want to play this particular map, you can go here and, and exit the map. But you have to upgrade a few things first, meet certain requirements. That way you can leave the map and go to a different one and then continue your story on a different map. Me, I always usually just finish the one that they gave me. The only time I picked another map was when I picked random with my other playthrough. Four times in a row it put me here. And I thought, well, that's kind of screwed. So I deliberately left the map. These here are... Uh, they're sort of like... Uh, observation posts you know this is a cell tower water park uh water tower stuff like that tall things and when you get up there you can go into observation mode and then it'll pre-scout certain things points of interest so like i'll pick this one just so you can get an idea now if i remember right there's a screamer usually in this area Sometimes what will happen is he'll be walking, and if your guy's pretty observant, he'll say, Oh, there's a screamer over there, and it'll highlight it on your map before you, you know, trigger it. So what I like to do is, it's slow, but I like to stealth my way through in the beginning, and try to get this guy built up as quickly as possible. Because once you have stealth uh, where you can run in a crouch, then it speeds things along and you don't make any noise. But as long as you're crouched, you're not generating noise. And th those skills will level up automatically while you're maneuvering around the map. I'm getting close. I'd better be careful. I don't want to get sick too. Alright, so I need to get one more plague sample because we only have four and the doctor needs five. Oh, we're no longer in the tutorial. This is the main part of the game. The first time I played this, I thought this was a tutorial map as well, but it's not. So we're going to enter this here truck stop. I have to do it in such a way where I don't trip these guys off, because there's two blood, blood plague zombies here. See how that one turned? Now their senses are more heightened than a standard zombie as well, so we're going to kind of do this quickly. Try not to catch their attention. This one's in an animation where it's like doing something to the ground, so you can sneak up on this one relatively easy. Remember, these are all automated procedures hey, too. Hey, found the sample we need. There we go. So this is an expl explanation of how blood zo or plague zombies work. Uh, one of the neater things, maybe it's annoying, maybe it's neat, I'll let you decide. If you don't need the uh, plague zombie material, you can just leave it, and it won't disappear. Like, you can just drive around and come back up to it later and pick it up later as you need it. I'm good. I need that sample right away if I'm going to save my patient. Okay. So the doctor's basically telling me to quit screwing around. Go ahead and search this place out just to get it done. Look here. Nothing there. First aid kits. Nice. We'll take that as supplies. And since we're right here, I'm going to show you this observation post thing. Like the mechanics for it's pretty simple. Zombies cannot climb ladders, so that's one way to get away from them as well. But they will not leave. If you if they saw you and you were up here, they'll just stay at the bottom waiting for you. So eventually you're going to have to like figure out how you escape. Alright, so this is the top. Enter survey mode, you just right click, which is like aiming down the sights. And as soon as I do that, you're going to see a bunch of question marks. And this will be the sights that I can survey within the realm of this particular observation post. So like this. Fruit stand. Army and Navy outfitter. That's going to be good for weapons and ammo. 
This will be for food. Warehouse usually is for like building materials. Trailers, just stuff. Gardening supplies, that's going to be for like seeds and plants and things. Food. Don't give that screamer a chance to yell. Yeah, you don't want that. Okay. Obviously fuel, just a house. I think there's two more. Okay. That's enough for now. Alright. So now if I go to my map, all those things are lit up. See? If there's vehicles nearby, you can spot those too from, from this observation view. It counts as one of those things that you would cross off the list. You saw that progression bar was going up. And it's a fixed number of things you find too. So it's like, you'll find the same thing every playthrough uh, in terms of those, those uh, buildings and such. But the vehicles are randomly generated, which is kind of nice. All right, so it's getting dark. Let's go ahead and finish our search here and get back to base because we got to deal with our D. Really what I was hoping for. 22 LR ammo. Go ahead and reset the gun. There we go. So it's a 10 plus one in 22 LR. Kind of weak. Sorry, I just heard goose, geese, gooses, geeses. That's what that was. Nobody around. Let's go ahead and speed things along. Hey, buddy. I'm back. And I've got what you need. Uncle Pete? Is that really you? His fever's getting worse. Drop off that sample in the supply locker so I can get to work. Sometimes the doors close auto-magically. But sometimes I just do it manually anyway. So if you have a... Uh, this here is a rucksack full of materials. If you drop it into your uh, storage depot, where, where it has this icon here, you dump medical supplies, right? So certain things cost medical supplies. But if I broke this bag open, it would actually turn into items like bandages or you know stamina potions, things like that. For now, I'm just going to put it in here like this. So I'll deposit it. Usually each rucksack's like four, four of something. So if you notice up there, it's up to 11 now. And then for individual pieces, you drop them in there. Into your supply locker. Like this. We now have enough plague samples to make the cure for my buddy. We should get on that as soon as possible. Okay. So now I go over here. And because that's in my storage, I can access it from here. So it wants me to go here and then produce this cure, which costs five plague samples. And two medical supplies. See that at the bottom below that. So this should drop to nine. Okay, I have the cure in hand. We'll have you feeling better in no time, my friend. There you go. Hey, no rush, amigos, but if that cure is ready, so am I. And go here. <laughs> I can make him wait, which would kill him. I can just give it to him right now. I can access his stuff. But I'm just hang in now. there. We'll get you through this. Might as well give it a shot. Alright, stab him. There you go. I'm back on my feet and ready. We did it. We actually beat His recovery goes up quickly. At least for today. And then the standing thing is every time you do something useful or you help save. somebody, you gain standing. Um, I think it's C? No. I forgot the community <laughs> button. The pipes are working and the breaker box is connected. Enjoy your water and power, everyone. I forgot the button for that. Now that we can catch our breath, we should figure out. So how this we're outpost, going to because here. of that perk, already has water and power, which is nice because Best certain things you need. You need to make um, this area safer for everyone. You need power to gain certain abilities or to I unlock saw a certain things. On our way in. Those freaks always gather more zombies. We should start there. So the next thing I want to build is probably going to be a workshop because I need to make Why other things. For problems to solve, and we have plenty to do at home. 
This place needs improvement, and it's going to take materials to do it. Yeah, we need building materials. Oh yeah, letter N. So this is my group here. So because of his standing increase, he's now considered a citizen. Um, I thought they would tell you what they are. Recruit. Oh, sorry. Recruit. So what you need is they have to become a hero before you can create a base leader. And then you have to finish the scenario for that leader specific set of quests. So here's our base. And things that the base already came with was a command center and a fire watch tower. So I don't have to build beds. I don't have to build a storage facility. And I don't have to build a command center. Certain places you'll have to build those things. And because this is one of those small little outposts, um, it only has room for two parking spots. Now at first I thought, that's terrible because what if I have three cars in two spots? It's fine. You can still park the cars at the base. You just don't park them in the parking spaces. These spaces will allow you to repair them, modify them, upgrade them in the parking space. Your vehicles that are not in the parking spaces will stay there. And then the other thing is, is if you move to a new base, only the vehicles in the parking spaces will m automatically move to the new base, which means you would have to walk back and forth to move your other vehicles. So it's usually not encouraged to hoard the vehicles until you're in the last base that you want to be in. Otherwise, you're going to be doing a lot of back and forth walking. Which I've done that before, because usually what I'll do is I'll build the first base here, which is perfectly fine for me, and then I had to walk all the way back here to go get the vehicle and drive it all the way back, get out of it, walk over here, grab the other vehicle. It's just a non-stop back and forth. So, let's see. Eddie has a quest that says, check your supply locker for useful items in a fight. Travel to the Spear Oil Station where Eddie saw the Screamer. So he wants me to kill the Screamer. Now, one thing I can do on fuel, is give myself a bit of an advantage, because right now I don't have much useful stuff. I can use the radio, and then these are the vanilla parts here. So I can, I can pick resources, and then I can radio out to a, you know, it just puts the message out in the ether, and then someone will respond, oh yeah, I saw a survivor over here, and then you can walk over there and try to recruit them or do a quest for them to gain their trust as a community. Same thing with all these things. You can find different materials or whatever. In the beginning, it's not quite as critical. Medical advice is where you reach out to somebody else and then they'll help you temporarily with like a buff. Vehicle delivery is like a supply drop. So I've got all these different, you know, prepper packs and all this other stuff. You get unique vehicles to each one of these, but I don't want to use these just yet because it's kind of an unfair advantage. And then the ultimate delivery is like an already pre-upgraded uh, car. And then you got the independence pack. So you got these different weapon deliveries, different vehicles here. Don't want to do that. I'm just showing you all this stuff. Supply drops. So I can call in for supply drops and you get one per scenario essentially. And then these are all the different like survivor packs and apocalypse packs and things that you can get as... I think it was part of the pre-orders or the... Uh, the DLCs or whatnot. Daybreak, this one is where you can actually cash in these prestige points. I can call in a trader and then they'll sell very unique items. The only problem is, is the prestige uh, traders sell you things in prestige and it's very hard to get it. So we'll just skip all that. Oh, and then the stuck thing. That was another one of those things that I thought was from H1Z1. People used to flip over their vehicles and they would get stuck on their roof and then you couldn't do anything about it and they would We're explode and vehicles are That's hard to find. So they added this where if you sit real still and you click this, it'll move you back, like time skip you back like a couple of seconds. And then you could start off before you got stuck and try not to repeat your problem. And I think this is usable every 15 minutes. Anyway, let's go kill that screamer. I think that's what it wants us to do next. Try to manage without me for That gate will close on its own if I leave it. So for now, okay, good. I emptied out. I don't want to touch that just yet. I don't want to fill up my inventory. So now what we're gonna do is that we're screamer gonna, there sees it me. Is. It's bad news. See that? So he called it before we even got there. 
Unfortunately, I think there's two other zombies on either side of him. One other zombie on him. I need to get wait for that one to move, and then I'll try to sneak behind it. But you see how he turns his head so far? You can see his eyes light up. That's his field of view. So his his you can get behind him, but you got to make sure you don't land in his cone of visibility. The bushes don't quite provide cover yet either. So like I just got to keep zigzagging along with him until I get that dialogue, and then you knock out the screamer. So the things like screamers and bloaters, those are what they call freaks, and they give you extra influence when you actually kill them, which helps you get towards hero status a lot quicker. But right now I'm going to be very cautious because we are surrounded by zombies. It's kind of nice that their eyes light up. It gives you sort of a an idea of where they're at, especially with how dark this game is. This game is so much darker than another one I play. Sneak up around her. Oh. So the bounty broker, apparently I finished the challenge. I forgot that I even had. So on every map, you're going to find a bounty broker. It looks like a money bag. So he's way over there. But yeah, you finish the missions and then you go over there and he will give you an item for comp uh, completing the mission. For now though, I'm not going to bother because it's not we're not supposed to even have that yet. That was from my other playthrough. And if you're wondering why I'm killing all these guys, it's because I'm trying to get uh, this character's wits up. So, let's see, I forgot how to do this, there. If I get this up to here, one of his specializations is stealth, and that's what I'm trying to get towards. That way I can actually walk or run in a crouch, because this is for the birds. Right now it doesn't look like there's anybody in the area. There's one over there, live and let live for now. This place is cleaned out. Because I already looted everything. So. There's a zombie in that container. Oh yeah. It's not getting out though. It, they just do that to like spook you. Alright. Where's that screamer? Okay. So this is what's called an infestation. So. Every once in a while you're going to see this on the map. And you can gain morale and, and favoritism by wiping out the infestations. But you have to be careful because each, inf each infestation has one screamer and a bunch of regular zombies. It's worse than I thought. This place has a full-blown infestation. So what you want to do is you want to kill the screamer before he attracts more zombies to your area. keep getting worse. And since I don't have a silencer or suppressor, anything I do is going to trigger all of them. So you really don't want to shoot these guys. Not until you have a suppressor. So, air on the side of caution. Big, wide arcs like this. Try to stay out of the field of view. There's the plague zombie over there. I saw his eyes. See how he keeps turning his head side to side? I need to be able to get to him without triggering the rest of these guys. Got that one. I really did I don't remember what quest I had set up for that. Now I could sort of cheat this and I could just kill him so that way I don't waste all your time while I'm waiting them out. And I think that's actually what I'm going to do. Gun sway though. Alright, I got the screamer. None of these are plague zombies either. Hit it again. Okay. Oh crap. Now you gotta break free. What I would try to do here is strike once or twice and then dodge. 
And then you gotta wait for your stamina to recover, so you just you can walk these guys because they're not very fast. Oh she is. Holy crap. <laughs> I kind of went around him, so it gave me like the insta kill option. All right, so that infestation right, should be wiped out. I think we can all sleep a little. I kind of need a bandage now, don't I? All right, so I'm not gonna hit this yet for the fuel, just because I don't need it, not right away. But I could use some medical supplies. That would be good. I don't think we're gonna find it here, but we'll see. I got nothing. Nothing. If we're going to survive, we need to build some alliances. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that later. We should start by finding some friendly neighbors. We'll do that again. So that's what it feels like to really fuck yourself. Yeah, see, I made the noise. So if there's any zombies in the area, they're gonna come. Ooh. Extra slots. Now you notice I'm traveling a little heavier now because that backpack weighs 12 pounds. Alright, so see that yellow dot? There's a zombie here. Oh, it's a plague zombie too. Great. Hopefully that's the only one. Hopefully. We're already into uh double overtime. Alright, so I need to use this now. Well that's the last of them. I got my health back. That was one of those instant health regenerators, too. It didn't creep up over time. Which is fine. I think I'm going to claim this outpost. Because I'm going to need fuel eventually. And I need an outpost anyway, so... We'll take that. Confirm. Okay. And it lights up, this which is kind of nice. For use. Now, you've got options here. You can go to here, really and off. you can open the supply locker right at the outpost. Supply lockers are like... The cloud, if you think about it, because anytime you access it, it's whatever you have in the supply locker at your base. Which means I don't have to carry this or this, and I get my weight down. But I need all the rest of this. So we're good there. I can technically upgrade this outpost too, and it'll tell you you need 800 prestige and then two building materials. Right now I have not enough building materials even to upgrade parts of my base, so we're not going to waste our resources just yet. Generally, when you search the fuel pumps, you get a can of fuel, so I don't really want to do that just yet. Oh, there's another screamer out there. Let's go get him. I could use the prestige. The air feels thick. There's got to be a plague uh, nearby. He's got our back Probably lots of plague to zombies, us. too. Good. So I need to sneak up on this guy without him seeing me. Looks quiet for now. Don't as look this way, dude. Nearby, this place won't ever feel safe. Okay, watch his head. Just watch his head movement. That's the easiest way to juke him. And then you kill him. Just like that. Alright. Do I have any quests to do right now? Strengthen our base. Okay, so I gotta get materials. And then I gotta do this to find other survivors. Uh, let's do the materials part for this episode. So we're definitely going to creep past uh, double overtime, obviously, but it's fine. This is one of those games where it's very procedural, so the pace is a bit slower. But I really enjoy it. I mean, I the first time I got this game, I probably spent a month's worth of weekends playing it. Which was nice, because I was trying to save money for other things that I wanted to do. So, you know, I stayed home and... You know, just talk to the girlfriend on the phone or whatever. We didn't really go out much at the time, so it was fine. That's not a dead zombie. If I creep up to it, she's going to start moving. So the best thing I can do right now is hop over this and try to sneak up on her. Like that. Before she gets up. And I think I'm pretty close to maxing out wits, so let me go ahead and kill everything on the way. I beat it to the prompt. Usually there's a prompt, it just says press E. So I'm gonna try to kill as many of these guys as I can on the way. 
That one's facing me. Let's see if I can go around this way. Hmm. I don't think I could split the difference without aggroing one. Let's find out. I'll take the risk. Okay, the one that's crawling can't move very quickly, so I'll go after this one first. Good. And I think this one has its back turned to me. I don't think they're responsive to light, so I can probably get away with this. Got that one. By the way, your close combat weapon never wears out. It's like your rider dies, so you don't have to worry about that ever wearing out. Every other weapon in the game wears out. There we go. I forgot which button it is. Just go straight to this option. Yes, I need one more star. Hopefully by the time I get to that location there that I marked on the map, I'll have that extra star and then I can start my specialization. I was so pissed when I lost this character in my very first playthrough. Like, I carried him through like four scenarios and I just, I did something stupid and I got him killed. Essentially, you get this mission where um, the person you're trying to rescue is like, oh, by the way, I have this stuff that you can smear on yourself and the zombies won't attack you. I turned it down and then the horde came and killed us all. But if I had used it like the game wants you to, then they'd just okay. walk right past I found you. found a good spot to search for materials. Which is good. Should this really be our priority right now? Yes, we need home it. is always a priority. Okay, there's something in there. I hear him, but I don't see him. I can't... Oh, it's up there on the roof, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think I could sneak up on that one. Like, that thing's got to move so I could sneak up on it and kill it stealthy-like. Oops. Cha-cha-cha-cha. Finally. There we go, building materials. This just sort of explains the rucksacks. Nothing in here. Ooh, maybe I can sneak up on her now. Let's try it. Nope. I don't know if it knows I'm here yet, though. Damn it. Just the act of getting on the ladder is getting their attention. Oh crap. jump over the side here. I'll stay stealthy. Calling this one a bust. Okay, she's got her back turned to us. There we go. Secure. Uh, do I have inventory space? I got plenty of inventory space. Okay, let's go look at the stuff. Once the site's secure, I can move around a little more freely. Parts are different than building materials. You need both. Head. Oh shoot, stay down. Or stealth kill everything on the way home. Man. 
The other nice thing is, if I ever get it, if you get your hands on a crossbow, you can kill the enemies in a crouch, and that helps build your stealth too. But I don't have that right now. All I got is firearms. There we go. Bam! Max level. All right, so let me go to character. Wait a minute, crouch. Okay, so now I get to pick a specialty. And they're both pretty good, but in my opinion, the stealth is better. So I just pick that one. All right. So now this will start to level up, and those uh, those statistics where it says current level, they will in increasingly get better until this is maxed out. So now I can hit the the run button, and I'll run in a crouch like this, so I'm not making any noise. And if you notice, my stealth or my stamina is going very quickly though. So the idea is to try to balance it, use up as much as you can, and then back off. And then it'll recover, and then you can just do it again and again and again. Whereas if I didn't have this skill and I tried to run like this, he would stand up straight and run and generate a bunch of noise. So like hey one guys, of the things I liked back. was being able to Welcome do that. Home. Thanks for taking care of this. To get him, you know, sort of more usable, I guess is a good way to put it. So then now what we'll do is we'll drop off this rucksack, so my materials will increase to... Well, this is the explanation here. Is this what now we're you up guys to seven. For? That'll be perfect. Good find. Hey there. With those materials, we drop can start building off. any time. Putting up a workshop would let us repair broken weapons. It's a good idea, so we're going to build a facility and then there's certain things you can build here with materials. But you have to remember, once you build it, there's a material upkeep cost too. So you want to be careful with that. So the first thing we want to build is a workshop. Once this and workshop this timer finished, will sort of like show you the building process. To find new ones. This talks about the base facilities. You can just pause and read it if you need it. But it explains how it all works. Being self -sufficient and now we're just waiting to survive out here. for this workshop to complete building. You can actually go to your base like this and you can see the, the progression bars. And you can watch this from anywhere you want. So like, even if you're out in the, out in the shit, you can, you know, pretty much keep an eye on this. So you know when to go back to base if you were waiting for something to complete. I see it's about to finish. And once it does, I think it even changes the visual. Establish a presence in this town. Let people know not to fuck with us. So I'll go over here. I can use workshop. Oh, it's still, it still says it's building it, apparently. I thought it was finished. So it's not quite done yet. We'll just wait it out. It's a few seconds. But I'm certain the visual changes once it's finished. This is a good shot of the uh, flashlight on your your backpack strap, essentially. Come on. Almost done. Flashlight turns with your mouse, but your avatar doesn't turn with it, which I found was kind of weird. Hey, everyone. Come see the shiny... New facilities available. There we go. So now it's updated. And this is what the workshop looks like. You can go in here, and you can upgrade it later, but you need certain prerequisites, obviously. So it wants circuitry and six materials. So what I'll probably want to do next is find uh, an outpost that gives me building materials per day. But we're out of time for the day. So this was the first 30 of State of Decay 2, the Juggernaut Edition. We'll get through this. And we're going to play this through, this like I said in the intro, like a sandbox survival type. So we're going to do the first level like this. And then I think once we complete this uh, scenario, then I'll go ahead and ramp up the difficulty because I play my main playthrough on normal just because I was trying to build like this super crew. And it, I've played enough scenarios. I think I played like seven or eight scenarios already where it's becoming, it's starting to feel a little redundant to me. So I'm going to start ramping up the difficulty a lot like those guys with Long Dark like to do interloper playthroughs for and see how long they can survive. But anyway, we'll get to that. Anyway, this was the first 30 of 
State of Decay 2. If you like what you see here, I'll leave you a, a link in the description below. If you're new to my channel, welcome, but if you're a regular here, welcome back. Either way, check out my other playlists and see if my other interests might be of interest to you. Uh, lately, I haven't been doing these because I've been covering the war in Ukraine since its beginning, and that's taken up a lot of my time, so to be able to sit down and actually record one of these like I used to, where I enjoy, you know, my channel content, um, it's, it's a welcome break because the show prep for that other thing is so intense. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Maybe hit like, maybe hit share, maybe subscribe, or maybe tell others about the channel. And we'll see you on the next 30 of State of Gay 2. Later.